most of us are running on empty because most of us don't have the tools to fill up our tank with adaptation energy. And so then you could get to the proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back. And then what happens is that the body launches into an involuntary fight or flight stress reaction. And in those cases, it doesn't matter how many self-help books you've read. It doesn't actually matter even how much therapy you've done because therapy is a software. It's an operating system. And I love therapy. I think everyone should be in it. This is not me dissing therapy. It's just highlighting the differences between an operating system versus what meditation does, which is a hardware upgrade. It's defragging your brain computer. It's rewiring your brain and also eradicating stress on a cellular level. Welcome to the Betty Rocker Show, the place to be to nourish your mind, love your body, and rock your life. Welcome back, Rockstar. It is so great to have you here for the final episode of season one of The Betty Rocker Show. If you have been inhaling all of the amazing content that came from our fantastic guests this season, our final show is like that wonderful exhale, the ah, the end of a delicious deep breath. And we have none other than the amazing Emily Fletcher, founder of Ziva Meditation to bring us home. We have talked about many times topics related to women's health this season. And as you're listening today, I think you'll recognize many threads from other shows coming together. Because stress has such a far-reaching impact on our lives, affecting everything from our happiness, our vitality, our fitness capacity, the length of our telomeres and gene expression to our hormones, and it's really the root cause behind so many diseases. The fact that there are simple tools we can all access anywhere we are in a short amount of time each day that can have such a big effect on stress, which in turn affects everything about the quality of our lives, made me really want to share this conversation and this information as the cherry on top of our first season. So sit back, relax, and get ready to exhale and release any stress from your body with the one and only Emily Fletcher. What's up, Emily Fletcher? It is such a treat to have you here with me. Thank you for joining us. Oh, the treat is truly all mine. I love you so much. <laughs> Aww. And that we're spreading the love to all of you listeners, too, because we have an abundance of love to share with you guys. Ah, oh, can you feel it radiating through your ears? <laughs> Yay! So, Emily, I'm so glad you're here. And we all know that the world is going through one of the more stressful times in its history. And we've never needed to cultivate calm and reduce stress more. You know, as the founder of Ziva Meditation, you've created such an amazing technique and such an amazing way to approach meditation that really helped me get my head around meditation as well. So I was wondering if you could give us a little history about the Ziva technique and what it is and how it works. I 100% agree. I feel like in these times of transition and uncertainty, it's more important than ever that we come home to ourselves, that we tap into the unchanging in the midst of so much change. And really the only thing that's unchanging is that animating force inside of us. Without sounding too hippy dippy, it's that love force inside of us. Like that's the only thing that really lives before us and after us. So meditation is a beautiful way to access that. And, and what I teach at Ziva is a trifecta of mindfulness meditation and manifesting. So most of the people, so the apps, the YouTube videos, the drop-in studios are actually teaching what I would call mindfulness, which is very good at dealing with your stress in the now. It's very good at dealing with the state change. Like, oh, my kids are driving me crazy homeschooling. Let me go do 10 minutes of this app. And someone guides me through some breath work and I feel better in the now. And mm -hmm. that is beautiful and necessary. And it's quite different from the meditation portion of Ziva, which is all about getting rid of your stress from the past. And that concept is, is new to a lot of folks. So like, what do you mean? How could I have stress from the past? But every time you've ever launched into fight or flight, every time you've ever been through a breakup or an all-nighter or been fired or, you know, a pandemic, it's left some stress in your cells. And over time, this is what ages us. Over time, this is what affects our sleep, our immune function. And so what the meditation portion of Ziva is doing is giving your body deep healing rest that allows you to get rid of all that stress from the past, not just the stress from today. And then we finished with something called manifesting, which is simply you designing your dreams for the future. And it sounds a little hippy dippy, but the reality is we're all manifesting all the time. You want to know what you're manifesting? Look at your life. 
right? Our thoughts create our reality. And so with the manifesting, we use this very powerful, potent time after the meditation to plant the seeds for our dreams. And I found that these three M's, the mindfulness, the meditation, and the manifesting work so much better together than they do on their own. Mm, I love it because it's like you're pulling past, present, and future all together into one, which is really the state that we're all living in every day, whether we're conscious of it or not. And so this gives us access to direct the course of our lives, heal things from the past, be more present. Those are some of the things I would say that it's done for me, at least, <laughs> using them. And I, I love the trifecta, by the way. I love that it's a trifecta. Trifectas are fun. And can you share a little bit about your journey of pre and post meditation? I'd love to hear it. Just selfishly, this is what I, this is my highest joy in life. No, I love it when my guests ask me questions. It's great. Okay, um, yes, great. I'll, like, keep, please, I'll keep them please. coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's great because I don't know if I've shared this with you guys who were listening either before, but I was always very, not anti-meditation, but I, I would say I do walking meditations or I meditate when I work out. Like that's my meditation. That's literally what I would say because I did feel the most present and the most calm when I was exercising or when I was active. And it was really well, I was living by the ocean at the time when I met you. And there was some kind of synergy in the universe that brought us together because I really needed meditation more than I realized. And well, I was somewhat of a manifester and that I was really good at affirming because looked at my life and I was clearly manifesting my dreams. I was very happy and still am. I would say I was very good with my mindfulness practices. I was great at dropping into the present, but I was dealing with a lot of past trauma that, you know, when I got my scores back from having my telomeres checked, which are the end caps of our DNA strands, guys, if you aren't familiar with that term, you can actually get them tested for your is it your cellular age or you know your real age? Mm -hmm. no, it's a biological age. Biological age, thanks. I was in my 60s with my telomeres. <gasps> wow, that's so crazy for me. I just can't even believe that. Yeah, and there's like a trauma score you can get. It's like a childhood ACE. adverse experience. Adverse or childhood experience. Yeah, my ACE is a six. So I think that's significant in my telomere score being so high. But any kind of trauma, of course, is going to, like you said, negative experiences, et cetera, they, they compound and they accumulate. And unless you do the work to really process them, and it's not like you get to this point and then you're done, right? Like I did 18 months straight of three hour EMDR sessions, a lot of neurofeedback, a lot of other types of work, but I didn't get to some point and I was done with that. Like it's an ongoing self-care process. And that's why I needed meditation so much because it gave me this like daily anchor point to just build the resilience. You don't do exercise for six months and reach your goal and then you're done and you don't ever have to exercise again, right? <laughs> like I learned that. And so with meditation to me, it looked, it was the same thing. I'm building this mental or the spiritual, the strength in myself, this resilience that gives me these reserves to draw in. And then I continue to deposit in that bank every day. Is that a good analogy for? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah, you're been making my deposits in like your consciousness bank account. What's the punchline? Didn't you get tested again? And like your body age had dropped? Yeah, it had dropped. It had dropped. And I, I think that it, it's still something because you know, without meditation, I, I do come up against, so I'm on the bipolar spectrum and I've for years really worked really hard on navigating that in really healthy ways, really consciously with a lot of resources and support. And there are still times though, where I, I come up against things and feel depression, like, or feel high anxiety and this current climate it just compounds, it adds extra stress to like whatever my own personal daily thought process or stress is. And I feel like without the benefit of meditation, I feel like it, it's harder to navigate, you know, cause there, I'm human. There are times I fall off track with my exercise program or I need to do something different or don't do my meditation practice. I really feel the difference when it's not there. Me too. I was just thinking, you know, through all of this change, like what we would call it in, in the Ziva world is we're all being asked to adapt. And that burns up something we call adaptation energy. 
And the thing is, if you run out of adaptation energy and then you have another demand, another change of expectation, like if you were already running on fumes and then you get, oh, no, no, I have to homeschool my kid this year because school's actually closed where you were looking forward to, you know, your kid's going to school finally. Or, you know, I thought I was going to have a job and now I don't. Or I thought I was going to be married and now I'm not. Or, you know, on top of all the other you know, the global pandemic, the social revolution, like everything that's happening. So it's like most of us are running on empty because most of us don't have the tools to fill up our tank with adaptation energy. And so then you could get to the proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back. And then what happens is that the body launches into an involuntary fight or flight stress reaction. And in those cases, it doesn't matter how many self-help books you've read. It doesn't actually matter even how much therapy you've done because therapy is a software. It's an operating system. And I love therapy. I think everyone should be in it. This is not me dissing therapy. It's just highlighting the differences between an operating system versus what meditation does, which is a hardware upgrade. It's defragging your brain computer. It's rewiring your brain and also eradicating stress on a cellular level. It doesn't necessarily change like what you believe or who you are, or what you, well, it does change what you think because most of us are just running like involuntary fight or flight, like stress programs in our brain. And so as you heal yourself on a cellular level, your thoughts just sort of innocently change. You're not muscling your thoughts or trying to think happy thoughts because you're a meditator. It's like, no, you're giving your body this deep healing rest, which heals you on a cellular. And now we even know on an epigenetic level. Right. Describe what epigenetics is before you move on. If you think about your genetic code as a hundred page book, and this is a relatively recent discovery. I heard a scientist named Ricardo Sabatini speak about this. He was one of the scientists who decoded the human genome. And the way he described it is imagine your, your genes, like your full genetic code, the thing that makes you you is a hundred page book. It's actually only the last five pages of our genes that are fixed, that are actual genes. The first 95 pages are our epigenetics. And this is really good news because the epigenetics are mutable. They're changeable. They're flipping on and off. They are the things that tell your genes what to do. So this means that every time you exercise, every time you meditate, every time you put your feet on soil, get in the sunshine, have healthy sex, you know, eat vegetables, like every time you do these healthy things, you're flipping on the healthy epigenetics, which are communicating to your genes. So we're all born with a blueprint for health, but we have a lot more control than we think we do. And that's based on every single day. Am I meditating or not? Am I exercising or not? Am I eating real foods or not? Am I sleeping? Am I sleeping? Mm, there's a big one. Yeah. Yep. I didn't mean to interject into your point, mm. but I feel like epigenetics is such an important thing to explain because when we understand what it can potentially do for us, we mm -hmm. understand why we want to step away from those behaviors that don't serve us because they also have the power to change your gene expression as well. And what you pass down to future generations, because yeah. now we're starting to understand that we're not just dealing with our own trauma, that we actually can inherit trauma for at least two, possibly seven generations. That means we can hand down our stress and trauma to at least two and potentially seven generations. So this idea of like, I don't have time to meditate. It's like, okay, well, your grandkids are going to be in therapy for two decades because you're not cleaning up your own house. So it's like, I actually think it's the least selfish thing we could be doing. <laughs> I'm curious, why do you think it is that we are so driven to be such doers and achievers? And so, like, for example, I got a comment in my Rock Your Life group today, which I see very often. And she was like, oh, I was so disappointed when I saw my challenge today was a rest day. Damn it. I wanted to work out again. And I was like, you know, and this is a mindset shift that we work with constantly in our group because we're like, look, when you rest, you recover and restore and replenish. And then you come back stronger. You get more out of your next workout. You get everything gets just better. So we have to retrain this concept of, of doing, doing, doing and action, action, action. Why do you think we're like that? Where does that come from? Well, I think that it's more societal than it is natural. I think that our society is very much affirming economic wealth. We very much affirm power. We affirm hierarchy. I mean, we, we clearly have an imbalance of masculine energy and that's not necessarily male, you know, because women have masculine energy as well. But one of the beautiful things that's happening in this time of change is a balancing out of masculine and feminine energy. And again, that applies to both men and women. But um, that masculine, like do, achieve, climb, go, 
um, that has been out of balance. Like we need that. It's part of us. It's part of who we are. It's part of what drives society forward. But just like any system, if it gets out of balance, it can create chaos. And so, you know, if you look at a human brain, it's a perfect model. It's 50-50, 50% left brain, 50% right, which means 50% masculine, 50% feminine, 50% individuality, 50% totality. And that to me is where the mastery lies is knowing when and how to navigate oh, well, right now I need to lean in. Right now I need to lean back. Right now I need to tap into my masculine. Right now I need to tap into my feminine. And, and I find that meditation just quite innocently and spontaneously, just as a byproduct of you getting to the chair every day, twice a day, which is what we teach at Ziva, we teach you how to do it on your own every day, twice a day, is that by doing that, you're actually changing your brain. You're changing the structure of your brain. Over time, you strengthen something called the corpus callosum, which is the thin white strip that connects the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And this is valuable because this means that even in the middle of a high demand situation, which would be left brain, you're still able to access that right brain creativity. But yes. like even in something that would have been like overdrive, masculine achieving, you're still able, still able to access that flow and that intuition of the feminine. And we yeah. really want all hands on deck. Yeah, and ladies listening, you know, as women, our corpus callosum actually has more connections than mm-hmm. a man's brain does. It's actually been studied by science that a woman's brain actually has a, more of those connection points so we can access and take advantage of that left and right even more. And so... What I love about this explanation you're giving us is that meditation actually helps strengthen those pathways even more, right? Because we have to, we have to actively practice, right? Just because like, look, we, men have a natural advantage with muscle, right? They naturally are come complete with additional muscle. It's how they're made, one right? of their benefits in nature. But a man can't actually take advantage of his muscle unless he's training it to a certain extent. Just mm-hmm. like if we have this natural advantage of a corpus callosum with more connections, we need to do certain things to strengthen that. We need to do certain mm-hmm. things to activate those pathways. So I know my brain's got some stuff that needs some support. So for me, meditation is something that really, really helps me feel like I have control over doing whatever it is I can do to do what's best for me, to help myself, to feel at my peak, to have the edge in, in my life, to help me be successful, to think with all of my brain. And mm-hmm. with a woman's cycle, with her 28 day cycle, you know, we have this sort of natural, our brain and our body go through this natural cycle, as we know. And mm-hmm. so I feel like, have you ever noticed as a woman, your, your meditation change with your hormonal cycle shifting? Mm. Have you had any of any in, anything come up from that? I'm just curious, because we've talked a lot about hormones on the podcast. We're just all fascinated. Yeah, I'm just thinking you should have Alyssa Vitti on. Do I you did, know you I did. did. Okay, we talked, that's part of why I know some of this stuff about the okay. corpus callosum and about the female brain. And yeah, she's, she's brilliant. She's so smart. She's, so, yeah. she's also a Ziva graduate. Unsurprising. So, oh, I know. Anyway, I, I don't know that I noticed my meditation practice changing from like phase to phase inside of the cycle, but I will say that meditation has very much helped me to balance out my hormones and it's really changed my period. Like I used to have yes. pretty intense PMS, like for like three days, I'd be raging and crying every month and breaking out. And now I don't have any of that. Like I don't rage, I don't cry, I don't break out. Like I have to, like oftentimes I'm surprised when my period comes. I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that was coming. Whereas before I was like, well, I know it's coming in three days because here I am breaking out and wanting to punch people in the face. Right, because well, your cortisol drops. <laughs> like tell us some more about the physiology of change that happens in the stress response when you're not meditating versus when you are meditating. So when we get stressed, the body launches involuntarily into a fight or flight stress reaction. It thinks a tiger is out to get us. Our, our biology is not yet caught up to the fact that most of our demands are not predatory attacks anymore. So even if it's just your mother-in-law calling or someone flipping you off in traffic, you're still going to, your body's going to think that someone's trying to kill you. Mm. And so then it launches into this series of chemical reactions. First thing that happens is your digestion floods with acid to shut down digestion because it takes so much energy to digest our food that we need all hands on deck to get away from the tiger or to fight the tiger. 
then that same acid seeps onto our skin so we don't taste very good if we get bitten into by the tiger and then that acid prematurely ages us. This is why meditators can reverse their body age by up to 14 years because not only are you getting rid of that acidity from the adrenaline and cortisol, but you start flooding your brain and body with dopamine and serotonin, which are alkaline in nature. So it's sort of like a green juice for your brain or a green juice for your skin. Um, so that's one thing. Then you're, when you're stressed, your bladder and bowels evacuate, so you can be light on your feet. That's what nervous poos are. Um, your adrenaline and cortisol increase, which is very useful if you want to lift a car off a baby, but not really that good for much else, except for like acute stress. Um, we can talk more about that in a little bit, but also your immune system goes to the back burner because it's like, who cares if you're going to get cancer, if you're about to be killed by a tiger, again, body's trying to conserve energy to prepare for this eminent threat. So this series of chemical reactions is super useful if your daily demands are tiger attacks, but if they are in-laws or not sleeping or pandemics or homeschooling your kids, then the fight or flight thing has become maladaptive. It is now disallowing us from performing at the top of our game. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that most of us can't even see that we're in it because it's like the fish can't see the water. Most people are so stressed. Everyone around us is so stressed. We assume this is the norm. We assume this is natural and it's not. It's our habit. It's not our nature. Mm -hmm. Nature did not intend for us to be sick, tired, and stressed all the time. That would be mean, and nature is not mean, right? What we're doing is that we're not acting in accordance with nature. We're not eating in accordance with nature. We're not sleeping in accordance with nature. We're not touching nature anymore. Right. And then we're wondering why our bodies are out of whack. And so what the meditation is doing is that it's just bit by bit, day by day, sitting by sitting, going away and peeling away those layers of adrenaline and cortisol and cellular stress that most of us have been accumulating for decades. And then what happens when we get rid of that and we start flooding the brain with those bliss chemicals is our sleep gets better, our immune function gets better, we become more fertile, our skin becomes more elastic. We just talked about the changes in the brain with the corpus callosum, but that's not all the changes in the brain. Your neuroplasticity increases, which is your brain's ability to change itself. Less cortisol allows your hormones and endocrine system to balance out, which as you I'm sure have been talking about, like the ripple effect of that is tremendous. But then I would say that the biggest benefit that most, well, some people are talking about it is that you just become happier. And the more happy you are, the more present you are, the more intuitive you become, right? Like if you can be happy in your body in this moment in time, this is where all the answers are. This moment, this is where the intuition is. This is where the ideas come. It's always here. It's always now. And we drive ourselves into suffering by looking for our happiness in the past or in the future. And so what we do when we meditate is we take that right brain to the gym, which is right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. And, and that's a really important practice, especially inside of so much global change, because a lot of us are in this story of like, well, once the pandemic is over, once I can travel again, once X, Y, Z happens, then I will be happy. But y'all, we might be looking at years and it's like, are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to not see your friends? Are you willing to be miserable for years of your life that you're never going to get back? Or do we want to start to be innovative and creative with new ways to find joy, new ways to connect with our friends, new ways to be of service now, mm. not when this is done? Powerful. There's so much scientific evidence about the benefit of meditation. It's crazy to me. And you put so much of this. I love your book, as you know, so much. And I recommend it to everyone. Thank you. Stress less, accomplish more. That's right. That's what it's called. And it is an amazing read packed with all this amazing data and so much research that you put into this, so much of your heart. So I guess my question is, with all the research out there, why aren't more people meditating? Why, where is the resistance to this? <laughs> Because humans are ding-dongs. Um, not really. We're brilliant, perfect creatures. But the same, you could ask the same question about vegetables. With all the science out there about vegetables, when we know how good they are for our cells and our brain, why aren't more people eating vegetables? It's like, well, because french fries are delicious. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, with right. all the science out there about alcohol and smoking, why are people still drinking alcohol and smoking? And so, but here's the good news about everything I just said. If you commit to a daily meditation practice, you're going to find that like your willpower, I don't even like that term willpower, but like just your preferences change. It's like you want to eat the healthy food. Your you motivations. To... I might use that yeah. word instead, motivations. Yeah. But here are actually the two biggest barriers to meditation to honestly answer your question. One is that people think that they don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. And two, people think that they have to clear their minds. So let's talk about the time piece first. 
because what most people are practicing is what I would call mindfulness, which again is very good at dealing with your stress. And then now it's creating a state change. It's going to make you, like I said, you get stressed, you do 10 minutes of breath work or guided visualization, you feel better in the now. Mm. Awesome but different return on investment from Ziva meditation because Ziva is getting rid of your stress from the past, healing you on a cellular level. So your productivity increases, your sleep efficiency improves, your immune system gets stronger, your body age reverses. So you start to find that your return on time investment is actually exponential. For the 15 minutes that you're investing in the meditation, you get back hours in your day. And, and that's not insignificant. So I'd say that's the biggest differentiating factor between Ziva and most everything else is really the ROI. Mm. And because none of us have time to waste, I would even argue that none of us even have time to spend. You better be investing your most valuable resource and investing it in a way that you are getting an ROI. Meaning like, you know, my day is full. I'm running a business. I have a kid. I'm, you know, usually like speaking and traveling. I'm working on book two. So it's like, I'm not meditating twice a day because I have copious amounts of extra time. I'm doing it because it makes me smarter. It makes me more intuitive. I do things faster. I'm happier. I'm more present with my son. And so I, I don't even like the meditation often. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just boring. And I just I'm sitting there like, you know, just like, boop -doo -doo. like it's not the meditation that we don't meditate to get good at meditation. We meditate to get good at life. That'll be mm -hmm. on my tombstone. Um, <laughs> That's such a good quote. Yeah. Oh, say it, so say it again. Say it again. Yeah, Emily. We don't meditate to get good at meditation. We meditate to get good at life. And so because, and this brings, brings me to the second point that a lot of us think that the point of meditation is to clear our minds. And so then we sit down being like, okay, brain, shut up. And because the mind thinks involuntarily, just like the heart beats involuntarily, then we're sitting there beating ourselves up, feeling like a failure because we can't clear our minds. Then we're not enjoying the meditation. And then we quit before we ever even see if it made our life better or not. And so this is why I'm on such a soapbox. It's why I'm out there telling people like you don't have to clear your mind when you meditate. It's not the point um, that you're going to have thoughts while you're meditating. And the gauge for your success really should be, am I happier? Am I more present? Is my sleep better? Is my sex better? Is my immune system stronger? Am I more productive? Do I feel of service? You know, these are the markers of success in meditation. It's not how many thoughts I had or how much I enjoyed sitting in a chair for 15 minutes. I don't really enjoy my 45th minute on a Stairmaster either, but I do it because it's like, oh, I have better cardiovascular experience and I feel stronger and my skin looks better and I'm happier and I have better energy. Like, so it's it, there, the exercise and meditation, there are so many parallels there. But just yeah, to the recap. De the deposits, they're the deposits you're yeah. putting into your bank. Yes. So recap, the reason why people are meditating is one, they think they don't have time. But once you learn Ziva, you find out that you have more time. Like our friend Mark Hyman says, for the 15 minutes I invest in Ziva, I get back three hours of productivity in my day. And then just this old misinformation that we think we have to clear our minds when we meditate, but that's really born out of monk meditation. Mm -hmm. Whereas Ziva is made for people like us, people with busy minds and busy lives. It's designed to make you better at life. Yes. I remember so well, we were at an event together years ago and you were meditating in your chair at the event. It was like free time and people were sitting around in their tables and we were just happened to be sitting, you know, together. And I looked over at you and you were meditating and I could tell cause you had your eyes closed. I knew you weren't sleeping. I could just feel your presence. You know, you were, you were there, but you were meditating. I loved seeing that because I was like, you know, a lot of us have this idea that to meditate probably need to be sitting out on a deck with a mountain view with our fingers in the own position and I don't know. Great that's, Lululemon pants. Some great Lululemon pants, definitely <laughs> an amethyst crystal nearby. At um, least one. At least one and some incense, maybe a yes. little patchouli. <laughs> yes, definitely. The right gear, the right place. Like I'm joking because um, I love all of those things. Me too. Really, really love them all. <laughs> However, what I liked was, you know, Emily is sitting there in her dressy clothes she didn't have to sit a specific way. She had a hoodie on, just totally chilling. I think I interrupted you at one point because I, I forgot you were meditating and had something to tell you. And you, you're so peaceful. You're so present. Those events can be really taxing. They're long, but you, every moment with you, you're so there, you're so present. And I know that has so much to do with your meditation practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to meditate in public because I feel like some people think I'm sleeping because my head droops. 
you know, it doesn't look like what we think it's supposed to look like, but then some people are like, wait, what is that? And it always plants seeds of curiosity. And so I'm so glad that you were curious. I loved it. Cause I was just like, here's a great example of you're doing what you're teaching. And this mm. is why you are the way you are. Except, you know, that's right before I started practicing. Now, one thing that a lot of people struggle with is sleep. So can you talk to us a little bit more about the science behind how meditation really improves our sleep quality? Because I feel like sure. that tangible benefit is something we can all get behind. Yes. So I'll quickly share that I used to have debilitating insomnia. I, I couldn't sleep through the night for 18 months back when I was on Broadway, just had so much anxiety. And you know, 18 months of insomnia is torture. And then the first day of my first class, I slept through the night for the first time in 18 months. And I have every night since, and that was 12 years ago. And so the reason why meditation cures so much insomnia is that insomnia is really the body using sleep as a time for stress release mm. when it should be using that time for sleep. So if you insert the meditation into your day, then body can get rid of stress in those two sittings, and then it can use your sleep as a time for sleep. So anytime you sit down, anytime you give your body rest, then the body's going to start healing, right? Rest and digest, but it also starts running like rejuvenating healing mechanisms, so when we go down to sleep at night, body and brain get a little bit of rest, body starts releasing stresses in the form of thoughts, then our mind is racing, it's 6 a.m. next thing we know, we haven't slept a wink and that's what insomnia is. So if you sit down to meditate every day, twice a day, yes, you're gonna be having thoughts, but body's getting rid of all that stress so that when it's time to sit, lay down and sleep, your body can just flip over into sleep state. So it actually decreases your sleep latency, which is the speed with which we transition into sleep. Mm -hmm. Also, you will find that instead of just going up and down and up and down, like hills and valleys, which is what most non-meditators sleep schedule looks like, most meditators, it just like, it just drops down and it stays down in this deep sleep for about six hours. And then you wake up and you feel more refreshed. So you actually, a lot of meditators need less sleep, but they wake up feeling much more rejuvenated. And that's some of the ROI on time investment as well. So if you look at like, okay, well, I'm meditating 15 minutes twice a day, it's a 30 minute investment, but I shaved an hour off of the sleep I need at night. So you're like, well, now I have 30 extra minutes in my day. And that's to say nothing of the productivity, joy, immune function, and better sex. And not to mention how much deeper quality sleep that you're getting as well, right? While you're sleeping, mm -hmm. which, you're, which you're talking yeah. about. You mentioned Broadway while you were talking about that. I know you, you have a really interesting story about how meditation came in to be a part of your life and how you came onto this path. Will you share that with us? Yeah, I'd love to. So I was on Broadway for about 10 years before I found meditation and my last show was a chorus line where my job was to show up to the theater and I had no idea like which character I was gonna play. Sometimes I would start as one character, they'd switch me to a different one. Sometimes I would just be chilling in my dressing room doing my taxes and they would say, Emily Fletcher, we need you on stage. And I would run down seven flights of stairs, they'd throw me in an outfit. And then sometimes I would be on stage before I knew which character I was playing. And so it was this constant state of fight or flight. Even if I wasn't on, I was terrified it was going to be thrown on. Oh my gosh. And that led to anxiety, which led to insomnia. As I said, I wasn't sleeping through the night for a year and a half, which led to me going gray in my late 20s. Oh my gosh. Yeah, which led to like getting sick all the time. I get sick like five or six times a year. Like I'd have to call out because I would have tonsillitis. Um, I was getting injured. And it was very confusing why I was living my dream, doing the thing I had wanted to do since I was a child, and I was miserable. Mm. And so thankfully, this girl sitting next to me in the dressing room who was understudying five of the leads, including Cassie, she was crushing it. And I was like, what do you know that I don't know? And she said, I meditate. And I didn't believe her. And uh, finally, <laughs> I, I took the course. And like I said, it, it cured my insomnia. I stopped going gray. I didn't get sick for eight and a half years. I started enjoying my job again. And so I left Broadway. I went to India and I started what became a three-year training process to teach. And then since graduating up top, we're almost at 40,000 people. Wow. And yeah, which feels so good. And, you know, the books now have been translated into like 14 languages and it's like, okay, it just feels really exciting. And you've also been hugely generous with your knowledge and teaching during this really difficult time in our history. I know you've donated Ziva to some of our people on the front lines. I know you've just been, your company's just been, you know, you're just a really giving individual. 
Um, really appreciate that. Yeah, we that. gave a, a million dollars in scholarships to healthcare workers on the front line. So over like 2,600 doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, EMTs. And I felt really grateful to be in a position where I had something to help. You know, when we get into a crisis, everyone wants to help, but meditation teachers couldn't teach in person, you know, and especially not with folks who were going to be interacting with people in the hospital. And so it was like, look, we have, people are stressed and we have a tool that people can do from the safety of their homes like, why would we not get it out there? Yeah. You know, and we're starting to see the ripple effect of that, that those doctors and nurses are, you know, it's changing their lives. So they're referring it to their patients. And so that's the beautiful, like reciprocal effect of that. Yeah. And I love the framework that you've, I've gone through the Ziva meditation course and actually like to go back and re-reference some of those videos frequently because it just, mm -hmm. you know, I need a touch point, but I love that I have that as a course, right? Like I love that it's all been online, that I could access it like in my home, whenever is good for me. So it's just such a great resource. I know we'll put some links in the show notes for you guys so you can check out all the things that Emily has. And I know that you have also been working on something for kids recently. Mm. Yes. I'm so, so excited about it. We just shot it about a month ago and it's called Ziva Kids. It's going to be the world's best meditation training for kids. And I'm not even being hyperbolic about that. I've been working on this thing for two years. We've been working with folks from Sesame Street. We built a whole puppet. We've been working with writers from Sesame Street. We've been working with child psychologists from Harvard, Rye specialists. I mean, Dr. Shafali, who's been on Oprah seven times and is a number one time New York Times bestseller about you know the conscious parent, the awakened family. And I mean, it's really like we pulled out like the best of the best for this because it's like that's what kids need and that's what they deserve right now. They're, we're asking our children to perform Herculean efforts right now. And, you know, they're responding to our stress as well as parents, the uncertainty, the, the where that it is to homeschool kids and not know what's happening to your industry or your finances. So anyway, I just think the timing of this is so perfect. I had no idea, you know, obviously that we we're going to be in this situation when I started working on this two years ago. Um, but I'm just we're working as fast and as hard as we can to get yeah. it out in the world because I just, I wish it was ready now, but basically it's, so it's two courses. There's one for four to eight year olds. And then there's a course for nine to 14 year olds. So there's I'll probably kids need to do the, teens. I'll do the four to eight year old one. That'll be Perfect. appropriate for me. Yeah. I'm a, I have about six. So yeah. <laughs> Great. Well then you're going to get to meet Z bunny. Z bunny is my sidekick. He is um, the, he's a rabbit and he's training to be a superhero. And every day he comes in with different challenges and I teach him these different tools and, and that allows him to unlock his superpowers of bravery and creativity and kindness. And by the end of the seven day training, he feels like a superhero. And my hope is that the kids watching along unlock their superpowers and that they feel like superheroes by the end of the training. And we made it, we shot it really like a TV show so that it's very entertaining and that kids want to come back and revisit it mm -hmm. again and again. But just like Ziva, it's designed to make them self-sufficient. So at the ideally, once they watch this, it's not like they need an iPad or an app or a phone in order to meditate. They'll actually have these tools to take with them to school on a road trip, you know, before a test, um, you know, as they navigate through the world, it really, it's resilience training. Mm -hmm. And, and my hope is that people use this as a tool, not because there's anything wrong with our kids. Our kids are perfect. They're great. Um, you know, we, it's our job to learn from them. So I don't, I don't want kid parents to go to this like, oh, my kid is so anxious. I want them to meditate. It's like, no, my kid loves soccer and they're going to use this to become better at soccer. My kid's really into cheerleading. And now when they meditate, they are more present and have more energy when they cheerlead so that they really feel like they have like a superpower in their back pocket. Yeah. And then the preteens is... Um, similar and that we also teach the mindfulness meditation and manifesting, but it's more, we feature more of like other preteens and it's just more age appropriate. Well, it's just amazing. What an incredible contribution. And I know if you're listening now and, and Ziva Kids isn't out quite yet, the things that you can do yourself are to start meditating yourself yes, because yes. what Emily was just talking about was just so important. And that is that our kids, they don't do what we tell them they do what we show them and they're so attuned to our energy states. And of course, I'm not really able to speak to this as a parent. I'm able to speak to this as someone who's listened to millions of people over the years who are parents telling me exactly what their kids are doing and telling them based on just doing workouts at home, doing more healthy eating at home. They're talking about what their kids are picking up. And Emily, as a mom, I know that you're super attuned to this. And those of you listening who are moms, 
you've told me this. This is why I know this. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's just a really important reminder of our own responsibility. And I may not be a mom, but I sure have a lot of kids in my life. And I know that the way that I behave has a big impact on them. Just doing my own meditation, being responsible for my own healthy habits is something that I can do for them in the meantime. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to share Ziva Kids with them. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. And thank you so much for having me. This has been such a joy. Yeah, it's it's a pleasure. And thank you again so much for being such an amazing guest. We love you. And we'll be sharing all of your links and you guys know how to connect with her. So thank you again, Emily Fletcher. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much, my wonderful rock stars. Thank you for listening today and for tuning in to season one of the Betty Rocker Show. As always, find links and resources from today's show over on thebettyrocker.com backslash podcast. You can leave a comment there. And please know how much I sincerely appreciate all of your feedback, your questions, your reviews of the show on iTunes, and most of all, your valuable time that you've spent with me this season. I look forward to bringing you season two in just a few months where we'll actually be doing a challenge. Yes, that's right. Every week I'll have a healthy lifestyle challenge that you can implement into your life that week and see how you do. You know, I don't believe any of us should be trying to do it all. You know, I'm a big believer in all or something. And that's why each week of our challenge next season, you'll have an entire seven days in between episodes to integrate the information that I'm sharing and do your challenge. And what's so great about that too, is that you can start to stack your new healthy habits. You know, you've probably seen that quote on my Instagram before where I say, what if instead of thinking about solving your whole life, you just think about adding additional good things one at a time and just let your pile of good things grow. Well, that's exactly what we'll do as we release a new healthy habits challenge each week with lots of great information about how the challenge can benefit you and good ideas for how to implement it into your life, giving you the time you need to really add to your pile of good things. So just like resting is an important part of our workout program so you can bring your best to the workouts you do, I'm taking a break to reset and rest so I can show up and bring you an absolutely rockin' season two. In the meantime, connect with me in many places on my fabulous website, thebettyrocker.com, where I share new workouts, recipes, and motivation every week. Connect with me on my social media pages on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, in Rock Your Life, my inner circle women's fitness community, where we have challenges, five new classes every week, and our wonderful private women's fitness community to support you on your journey. And I'd love to see you in there if you're not yet a member. So until next time, my friends, I'm Betty Rocker, and you are so awesome and amazing. Don't you forget it. Bye for now. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Brie Argett Singer, Betty Rocker Inc., and the producers disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. Before starting a new exercise, fitness or health protocol, or if you think you have a medical problem, always consult a licensed physician.